We need to work together at regional and global levels in order to develop a common position on how to tackle ocean-related threats and challenges, and in order to sustainably harness the opportunities that our ocean offers. This is why Kenya, co-hosted together with Japan and Canada, the first ever global conference on the sustainable blue economy in Nairobi in November of 2018, and we will again be co-hosting with Portugal the next UN Ocean Conference in Lisbon in June of next year. To implement a coordinated structure for knowledge and data sharing, Kenya is a member of the Global Sea Level Observation System, and we have two stations located in Mombasa and Lamu on the Kenyan coast. These collect sea level data as part of a global network. Kenya also hosts the Regional Maritime Technology Corporation Center, which champions the adoption of energy efficient technologies from the shipping sector. Increased development financing towards sustainable ocean practices, which meant both ecosystems and also our investor needs. Currently, because of financing challenges, the investment in the maritime sector is currently subdued, thereby denying countries significant resources and sources of life, livelihoods, as well as jobs for our citizens. So we need to strengthen the nexus between sustainable ocean economy and security. And Kenya, as a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council, has prioritized the nexus between climate change and security. Ladies and gentlemen, governing the sustainable use of the country's ocean resources is indeed highly complex. In Kenya, as in many countries in our region, the blue economy is not governed as a unified sector, but rather as a complex intersection of sectors connected by a shared natural resource. What then do we need to do to unlock this potential of Africa's blue economy, while at the same time protecting the health and sustainability of the ocean? Let me dare to make a few suggestions for consideration during this conference. I believe we need to firstly commit to sustainably manage 100% of the ocean area. Kenya is currently developing a marine spatial plan and as a member of the Global Ocean Alliance, we are committed to put up to 30% of our oceans under marine protected areas by the year 2030. The second is to strengthen maritime security. Marine security threats, including illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing by foreign trawlers, degrades our marine ecosystems, and also through the dumping of toxic waste and the destruction of our coral reefs and coastal forests all have a negative effect on the future of our oceans. In Kenya, we have now established a Coast Guard to combat illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, and we have enhanced security and safety of our waters. The third aspect is to conserve our mangrove resource and to protect fragile seagrass and coral reef ecosystems. In Kenya, our Mikoko Pamoja, the mangrove conservation and restoration project that we have started 
in Gazi Bay in Kenya aims to provide long-term incentives for mangrove protection and restoration through community involvement and community benefit. The fourth is to empower our small-scale fishers as the stewards of our marine ecosystems. The fifth, to control ocean pollution. And in this regard, Kenya has banned the use of single-use plastics in our country. Here in Africa, we have a self-serving interest to maintain a healthy ocean. Indeed, as we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has left many of our economies devastated. Recovery efforts provide an opportunity to explore new growth paths as well as new strategies. And in this context, a critical question is how Africa can harness its rich marine resources to build back better in a post-COVID world. I today wish to applaud my brother, President Nusi, for rallying us all around here today on this issue. Ladies and gentlemen, the African Union Agenda 2063 recognizes the blue economy as a lever for economic transformation and growth especially for its 38 coastal and small island states. However, implementation of this vision is still very nascent. Africa currently accounts for less than 7% of the global market for blue products. And I do believe that we could easily double this figure in less than 10 years. In the process, we would spur faster economic growth in our coastal states and create a huge number of jobs for our young people. It is a great pleasure to join you today at the invitation of my brother, the President of Mozambique, to join you in this Blue Economy Conference, which focuses on an issue that is of increasing importance to all of us on the African continent. This is in context of climate change and also as a new frontier of growth for African economies. Indeed, as the conference theme highlights, and I quote, Investing in the ocean's health is investing in the future of our planet, end of quote. And indeed, a healthy ocean is central to human health as well as our wealth. The ocean contains 97% of the Earth's water, it supplies half of the oxygen that we breathe and regulates the weather and temperature. Research undertaken under the agencies of the Ocean Panel, of which I serve as a member, indicates that the ocean-based climate action could provide about 21% of the carbon mitigation needed to meet the Paris Agreement goals by 2050. In addition, the ocean is an untapped economic development frontier. The ocean has an estimated asset base of over 24 trillion US dollars. It is a source of food and livelihoods for at least 3 billion people worldwide, and about 90% of all the world's goods are traded across our oceans. 
With smart management practices, the ocean can sustainably produce up to two-thirds of all our animal protein needed to feed the world's population by 2050. I have noted that Mozambique has established a Ministry of Sea, Inland Waters and Fisheries, and we in Kenya are looking to Mozambique for instructive lessons on managing this complex sector. So as I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to Nairobi for the fifth session of the United Nations Environmental Assembly, UNEA 5.2, which will be followed on the 3rd and 4th of March next year by a commemoration of 50 years since the inception of UNEP. I also, ladies and gentlemen, take this opportunity to also invite all of you to Lisbon for the second United Nations Ocean Conference that will be held on the 27th of June to the 1st of July, 2022, a conference co-hosted by Kenya and Portugal, and I look forward to seeing you all there. I conclude <laughs> by once again thanking my brother, President Yusi, and all the organizers for the effort putting this conference together. And indeed, I thank you for your warm welcome, and I look forward to participating in the ongoing deliberations. Asante Nisana, thank you very much. Thank you. It is with a great sense of gratitude that uh, I address you all for being with us today at this important platform of dialogue, international dialogue, the conference Growing Blue in its second edition that uh, takes place at uh, the prodigious and tourist city of Vilankulu, Yamban province. I wish to extend greetings in a special way to His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya, our guest of honor to this event. Karibu Nyumbani, Rais Wetu. Karibu Sana. Oceans as regulators of uh, uh, the climate and temperature should be understood as a common a heritage for the humanity, uh, a critical element of continuity of human life, in addition to being uh, the providers of uh, food and livelihoods for millions of people. Uh, oceans provide a natural highway for international routes which are connecting all continents of the world. For these and more reasons, uh, protection of oceans is indeed a central element for the achievement of uh, the Sustainable Development Goals so that our actions today do not threaten the welfare of the coming generations. Therefore, today, under uh, the theme investing in the health of the ocean is investing in the planet's future.